Hey there YouTubers, it's Don coming back to you again with another video and today I'm very excited to demonstrate our Keystone Jacks. Actually this is one of multiple types that we're going to be carrying. In this particular case it is unshielded category 6 toolless Keystone Jacks and let's take a look and see what's inside the box. Now in this particular case it's a 12 pack but uh, we do offer multiple pack sizes. We have a nice fold out color instruction sheet. We've got zip ties and we've got the jacks. Now there's one missing out of here because I was playing with this earlier but it does come with 12, believe me, not 11. So we got the jack with a dual level uh, conductor holder cap for threading through your conductors. A nice easy close cap and then we have a tool that's going to help with that too for some of your thicker conductors and of course zip ties uh, to help with uh, keeping the cable uh, secured at the rear of it for proper strain relief. So I say let's get to it. Let's let's get to uh, terminating one of these category 6 jacks with some category 6 cable and see how it all goes. Okay so for our demonstration of the category 6 toolless uh, Keystone Jack Termination Unshielded. We're going to use uh, Category 6 Unshielded Plenum. And uh, we'll start by stripping off the cable jacket so we can terminate the, uh, the jack properly. So the first thing is we're going to use the True Cable Cut and Strip Tool. Raise the blade all the way up. Put about <clears throat> two and a half inches through there. And then lower the blade down until it makes firm contact with the cable jacket. Turn a couple times. <clears throat> and make sure we didn't nick any conductors. I did cut through the jacket, which normally you want to avoid, but I'm going to make sure I didn't nick any conductors. And that's something that you should always do. Check at the cable jacket there. And no nick conductors, so we're good to go. Keep this little guy around uh, for untwisting the pairs, and you'll see why that's useful. Next up is to cut off the little rip cord there. Some people use the rip cord for uh, stripping the cable jacket back. I prefer using a actual stripper because you get a cleaner edge. Then uh, as with any higher category cable like Cat6 or 6A, you're going to be uh, dealing with a spline. Now resist the temptation to simply cut it straight across like this. The reason why is because when you're terminating this you're going to want to get the conductor pairs as close as possible to the uh, to the conductor uh, threading cap uh, for the jack or, or for a plug for that matter. So you want to get that spline off there as much as possible. There's four wings on it and so if you take your, uh, your flush cutters here, rest it on the cable jacket and cut at a downward angle on each of the wings and then simply twist to remove and it's gone. And the main advantage here is you've got a nice clean a nice clean section here. There's no spline sticking up to cause you trouble. All right, so you put your conductors back out. And now it's time to start working with the jack. So open up your keystone jack like this. It'll come ready to use. Just simply take out the conductor cap, conductor holder cap, I should say. And we're going to use the T568B sequence, which is the bottom colors on this cap and it's a dual level cap so two of the pairs are going to go under this bar here and two of the pairs will be above the bar. It's the blue and green ones that go through under and come out over here and so those are the ones you want to work on first. So the next thing you want to do to, just to set yourself up for success is look at the, at the, at the pairs here and how they're falling. So you can see that we're already set up. We got blue and then green. And if you look at the cap, we got blue and we got green for the B sequence. So you can put them right in there under that, under that ledge or bar. Lift up your two remaining conductors and then get a good grip on it like so. And then we're going to put the blue there and we're going to put the green there. At this point, the now one thing you should be aware of is that uh, toolless keystone jacks 
don't have a sharp point to allow you to break the pair uh, to get them down there right away. You do actually have to uh, uh, untwist them. So using your cable jacket piece, which is the quickest and easiest way, simply untwist the pairs down as far as necessary, but don't untwist too far. Half inch is uh, what you're shooting for. Now you'll notice that on this particular cap, in uh, for each pair, it's always the blue is always in is always uh, the reverse is I should say the blue is always behind, and the striped uh, uh, wire is always uh, ahead. So in this case, you see that. If we were to put it in there like this, that would be incorrect. So we do have to untwist a little bit more, but just enough, not too much. Then thread, thread through the stripe and then the solid. And if you take a close look, you'll see that the distance from the last twist in the pair to where it's actually threading through and, and uh, going in here for the prongs on the jack is less than half inch, so you're in spec to do that. It's always best to get the termination as tight as you can, but as long as you're as a, at least a half an inch, you're good to go. And I can see the, the green pair is gonna, is gonna pull the same thing on me, so that's okay. Untwist just enough. Put through the stripe, then the solid. And there we go. And now we work on the rear of the jack. On this side, it's going to be the orange, and we're already set up to do that properly. So we can twist down just as much as needed. Untwist, I should say. Stripe, solid. And then for the brown, You're going to do the same thing. Stripe, solid. Okay, so the next thing you really want to check your work because after you get this all flush cut and put into the jack and closed, that's the last time you want to, uh, that's, that's the moment where you don't want to know that you got it wrong, so it's always a good idea to double check. So it should always be the striped and solid, and it's green for B, so it is striped and solid green. On this side, it is uh, striped blue, then solid blue, and that's exactly how it is. That's right. In the rear of it, we've got the stripe uh, brown and solid brown, and that's how it's wired. That's correct. And then we've got the stripe orange and solid orange, and that is how it is. That is correct here. And you can play with it a little bit if you want to, to get it a little bit tighter, uh, especially on these rear pairs if you like. Now, again, they're, they're still in spec. This, if I was to terminate it just like this, it'd be fine because the distance from the last twist to where it's actually going to terminate here is going to be less than half inch. And it's going to be in a case in all, all these pairs. Now, one thing you do need to take a, a, a good close look at, though, is right after it gets threaded into the cap, always check the next pair or the, on the next twist down and there's an air gap in there. And if you can see it, you can see an air gap. You don't want that air gap because that's the same thing as if you had untwisted it. So what I would do is unseat it, pull again tightly and play with it until you actually do get that air gap out of there. And we successfully got the air gap out. The next step in this little procedure is simply flush cutting off the conductors. Take your flush cutters, lay them against the housing of this uh, cap here, and simply flush cut them off. You don't want any excess sticking out. And that cap is now ready to be put into the jack. So open your jack all the way up, and you'll see that there's an arrow here and that means it should point to the front of the jack, which is considered to be where the RJ45 port is. So take it, it only goes in one way, and then put it all the way forward. It'll snap in, well not snap in, but you'll feel it, you'll feel its seat there. And then close, 
And now for category six and six A, uh, you're dealing with 23 AWG copper conductors. And even if you're able to successfully snap this guy closed, there are gonna be situations where you're gonna be doing lots of these guys and you're gonna get tired. Your fingers are gonna get tired. And uh, so, I mean, if you've only got a few and you got the finger strength, uh, then, then go ahead and close it until it snaps. You can also put it between your palms and do it that way. But quite frankly, I always bust this out. It is the coolest tool I have ever had the pleasure of using. This is our new true close tool and it can work for any of our Keystone Jacks that are the toolless variety, including our field termination plug. The outer cutouts here are for Keystone Jacks, the toolless Keystone Jacks. The slightly uh, narrower inside steps are for our field termination plugs. So to use this is quite simple. All you do is at the rear of the jack, put it so it looks like that and snap it closed. Really is that simple. And it locks away, etc. After you've done quite a few of these guys, you'll appreciate having a tool like that. If this was a shielded cable, I mean, if this was category 6A or shielded, you'd be seeing me use that particular tool uh, for any of these. And it's because the, the conductors will just simply cause you some trouble getting the housing closed. And that's normal. And if you've terminated these before, you've probably had that happen and had to go reaching for a pair of pliers. Problem is though, Regular pliers don't put a or put a uh, uneven amount of pressure on. Where the parallel closing pliers, uh, like our like our true close pliers, these are dead dedicated and designed for the task to close like that. So this is what you really want. I suggest I strongly suggest you pick up a pair. The very last step is to put on your zip tie, and there's a strain relief here. So just simply. Put your zip tie on around the cable and then snug it up. You don't have to crank it down so that you're uh, smushing your cable or anything. Just snug it. And then flush cut off the little bit of excess here. And there you go. We've got a category six jack with a category six cable all ready to go, ready for a patch cable to put it into a wall plate or a patch panel, whatever you're doing with it. Uh, if you liked my video, uh, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give us a thumbs down. Please subscribe. And I enjoyed uh, showing this to you, and we're going to be covering quite a few more of these. So you have a great day, and happy networking. Mm -hmm.